The first one is going to be COF6. That has a 3 minus charge. And we're going to compare that to COCN6, which has a 3 minus charge. So a lot of the times, when we're inter in interested in magnetism, we need to know how many unpaired electrons a particular transition metal complex has. And this is a very, very important property of these transition metal complexes. So if we look at each of these transition metals, we have cobalt, which is a 3D transition metal. And it's going to have, if we're cobalt 3 plus, it's going to have six valence electrons. So we need to fill six electrons into the lowest energy configuration of all of these transition metal orbitals that we have. So the question is, what's our electron configuration going to be? We kind of need to look at our energy diagrams. In the case of the fluoride ligand, we have a T2G orbital and an EG orbital. This is a weak field ligand, so our delta O is going to be small. As a consequence, when we fill in our six electrons, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a weak field ligand, which is going to give us a high spin complex. We can figure out what the spin is. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five electrons that are spin up or have a plus one half spin. And there's one electron that has a minus one half spin. This gives us an overall spin of plus two. For our CN minus complex, cyanide is a strong field ligand. With a strong field ligand, it means we're going to have a large delta O. So our T2G EG splitting is very, very large. So in this case, delta O is a large value. Because of this, we fill in our first three out of the six electrons that we have to fill in here. And we fill the first three spin up in the T2G orbital. It actually is going to require, or we're going to get less a less energy or a more stable electron configuration if we put the other three electrons down here. Because delta O is so high that we would have to put the electron all the way up here, which will cost a lot of energy for us. So in this case, we have a strong field ligand, which is going to give us a low spin configuration. We can calculate the spin moment for this by saying that we have three electrons that have a plus one half spin plus three electrons with a minus one half spin. That means our overall spin moment is zero. So this is our, I've circled the overall spin. And we can also look at the number of unpaired electrons. In the case of our fluoride complex, we're going to have four unpaired electrons. And in the case of the cyanide complex, we have zero unpaired electrons. This is going to allow us to characterize these complexes one step farther. Because what we can characterize the complex over here on the left is we're going to say this complex is paramagnetic versus the compound over here on the right, which is diamagnetic. In a paramagnetic complex, we have unpaired electrons. And in a diamagnetic complex, there are zero unpaired electrons. 
And this is going to be very important because if we have unpaired electrons, we're going to have this complex be attracted to a magnetic field. So what we can look at here and what we need to know is when we have a high spin versus a low spin complex, it's really going to influence the magnetism. In the case of our cyanide complex here, we have zero unpaired electrons. So it's not attracted to a magnetic field at all. Whereas our fluoride complex will be attracted to a magnetic field because it has four unpaired electrons. So you'll be asked to determine how many unpaired electrons a particular complex has. And in order to do that, you need to figure out number one, what is the geometry? Then you need to think about what ligands are associated with that and if they're high spin or if they're low spin. Okay? You also need to look at the transition metal center because if we would look at, if you look on the periodic table, cobalt is element number 27. If you looked at iridium, which is a 5D transition metal underneath cobalt, if it formed a complex with fluoride, which is a weak field ligand, it would still have zero unpaired electrons because that's a 5D transition metal and it's going to have a large crystal field splitting or a large delta O as well. So these are some of the things you need to start to think about if I asked you how many unpaired electrons something has. Now you also have to consider the geometry because remember what, that I said when you have a transition metal center the way you orient the ligands around that transition metal center is going to influence the interaction with the d orbitals, which will give a different crystal field splitting. So if we look at different geometries, we also have to analyze a tetrahedral geometry and a square planar geometry.